Hi oh guys, hope you're well. Um, I decided I've watched uh, quite a few videos that I was going to buy a system a V8 engine to go into my Italian Akurama boat because I didn't have any luck with electric and stuff like that. So I paid out all my hard earned money. Um, these are not cheap as you probably know. And I spent a couple of weeks putting together making uh, the engine mounts to go in the boat. It's kind of got a lean back at a slight angle. Uh, made a clutch for it. Blah, blah, blah. So it's been like nearly three weeks just getting it to fit in the boat. I hadn't run it up. Um, I thought I'd see how it fits in the boat first. So I uh, went over to a friend of mine on Sunday. Uh, we made up a table uh, and it wouldn't start. And we found out I had the timing 180 degrees out. So as soon as we put that Ran the right way. She fired up, sounded okay. Um, you know, just a little, make sure it runs all right. So anyway, we left it at that. Um, today, I decided to uh, make a proper little board for it uh, with a, a radiator uh, and try and run it in before it actually goes in the boat. Well, it was kind of a bit of a pig to start for some reason. Uh, it normally starts first time. But it started up. Um, it was really rough, um, got a bit better, but then after kind of a couple of minutes, it just started smoking really bad out of the, looking from the front, it started smoking bad out of the, the left hand bank. Um, in fact, it was emptying the oil out of the exhaust so quick that I was getting air bubbles in this oil pump where it was using the oil up so much. They don't hold a lot, it's about 28 millilitres, I believe. Um, and as soon as that drops a little bit, you start getting air bubbles in there. And when I put my hand over the exhaust, it was spitting out oil like, I, like a, a glow plug engine. So I couldn't believe my luck again buying a Sterling kit engine. I was really, you know, I'm really upset about it. Um, you know, I'm not going to do it anymore. It's too much heartache, stress on myself, you know. You, you keep thinking that one day you're going to get an engine that you can just put in something and it's going to run and run and run. And this looked fantastic in the back of my boat. It actually, you know, I mean, the real Akramas have like a twin Lamborghinis and I believe they also have a single Ferrari. But anyway, it was just smoking like mad on, on, on this side here. So I took the head off. Um to see what was going on. Um, and if you can see in this picture, I believe this is number two cylinder and number eight were full of oil. Two cylinders full of oil. No wonder it was smoking. And I mean, look, that's how much oil was in there. You know, these ones I didn't seem too bad, but this, you know, it was just, it was just chucking the oil out of these two cylinders here. And for what reason, I have no idea. Because the head gasket looked good. Um, I'm sure it kind of broke an oil ring because it would have scored up the bore or done something like that. So if any of you guys out there who've got a Sisson 38 or anyone on Sterling kit or anyone can help me out to say, why has that done that? Because the right hand bank is running fine. There's no smoke. Uh, and there wasn't really any smoke when I first started it out. But today, it's decided to, like, eat its own oil. Um, I couldn't keep running it. Um, it. It was eating so much, I had to top it up after every, like, two-minute run. It was just ridiculous. And it was just pumping out raw, you know, raw oil out of the exhaust. So, this was the state of the, the heads. So you can see, I believe this was number two, which is the worst one. You can see it's black there. And as you go along, you can see they've all been burning oil. This one, all this side has been burning oil. Now, a lot of you guys would probably say, oh, it's, it was a head gasket. But I couldn't see anything wrong with the head gaskets. Now you can see the oil here is round here, all here and around all these. And what gets me is these are where the push rods go through. 
Now, on the back of these holes, oval holes here, is where the push rods go through. And the push rods are actually hitting, there's a bourbon raised on here. They are actually hitting, the push rods are hitting the cylinder head. You know, I couldn't believe that. How can you have an engine that costs that much money uh, and not have this sort of sorted out? It, it was hitting on there. And the other thing we've got on this side, where the spark plugs come through, on through here, where they where you screw them in, it raises up like a burr here. Each one of these has got a burr. And if you put your straight edge on it, you can see daylight underneath each one. Um, and these are sharp. You can see these have been, these little nicks out of them here is where the push rods have been rubbing on them. You know, just so, so annoying, you know. So anyway, uh, I don't know where I'm going to go from this. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys know what it could be. I mean, I've cleaned the cylinder head up. Um, I don't know if I can zoom in. Uh, you can see where the plugs come in. Now this is the head. Now where these come in here, I don't know if you can see it, but I think you see it just there. This is the raised here. And when you come back down to here, each one of these, if you, let's hold it up this way. Each one of these, you can see a little nick out of it on the top. Each one of these has got a little nick where the push rod has been going in and out and catching on the back of that, that hole. There's one there, look, you can see it. So the push rods are rubbing on there. And the spark plugs, when you screw them in, it raises it up here because it's so thin. You know, it's way too thin there. But, you know, I've cleaned it up. But, you know, I'm really, really fed up about it. Uh, it's just weeks and weeks of work just down the drain, you know. Um, like I say, it's just so stressful. Keep taking it apart, putting it back together again. And not actually not actually getting it to run. Now, the other thing which I think is ridiculous, there's this little connector here, look. What on earth, you know, when I put it together, I thought this can't be right. It's it's sort of almost cutting the, the pipe. Got a little fell there, and it won't be long before that was to split. And as for this one, <clears throat> if you go above half throttle, this is a water pipe, if you go over half throttle, it blows this off. Even with a clip on, I don't know what you would need to hold that on. But anything over half throttle, and it just pops off and blows water out everywhere. Um, now, here's the oil pipe. Now, as soon as that sump drops down a tiny little bit, you start to get air bubbles in this, which air bubbles in your oil line, as you know, is no good. And it goes up here... So you can see all bubbles were going up there, bubbles were coming from here round. Um, I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know why they had to make a, an outside pipe like that. They couldn't make a, a proper one or, you know, it's it's not great. But <clears throat> I don't know what I'm going to do with it now. Um, I'm going to get on the Toyon, not Toyon, get away from that name. Get on the Sterling kit and see what they can make and do. Or if they know what it, you know, what's wrong with this, because it's a very strange sort of story to when I got this um, engine. Um, I got it for like a fairly good price, but I was kind of, I was a bit kind of, I don't know, suspect because all the other ones I've seen have been red, and they said to me, "Oh, this one's not. It's a silver one. Um, it's not painted like the ones you see." Uh, and the new ones I know are orange, so I don't know whether this was old stock or uh, just thrown these bits together to make an engine up. Um, but it still cost me like nearly um, thirteen hundred quid, you know, nearly fourteen hundred quid with its plugs and all that kind of thing. Um, and to have this sort of problem with it is uh, it's just it's just not good. So <clears throat> I don't know what what this engine actually is because 
I've not seen one that's in plain silver. Um, I've got the red rocker box covers, but it kind of went together all right. There's some sort of, um, you know, the Chinese translation of our English is not very good. Instruct, you know, the instructions are kind of not brilliant. Um, and that's how I got the timing out, you know, reading their instructions. <coughs> Excuse me. But anyway, it is what it is. I'm hoping Sterling Kit's going to get back to me. Um, I don't know if it needs, well, I don't know if it needs a new head or a, a block or whatever it needs. I mean, I'll probably go for it. You know, put a new head gasket on, and it'll probably be exactly the same. There's definitely a fault somewhere, whether something's cracked, uh, warped, or whatever. I don't know, unless the oil pressure's too high. But I don't understand why it's in the left bank, and the other side is working fine. And as you saw in pictures, you know, number two cylinder, they're just full up of oil. So, so it's either coming from the top. You know, I don't know what sort of pressure they've got going to the top because the rocker, rockers are only like fed by blow by. So I don't know what sort of oil pressure they've got coming up the top there. I believe this hole here is the one where the oil comes through uh, up into the to, to the rockers. I don't know, but you know, even with yeah the head, uh, head gasket blowing, you wouldn't have the bores actually full up with oil. You you think you'd have water in there or something like that? There's no no water in the oil. That's fine, you know. Um, but why is it, for some reason, um, that piston and number eight are filling up with oil? It's, it's just like the oil's just pouring into them two cylinders. Um, just, I haven't seen nothing like it. I've been around engines, model engines, real engines for like you know, half my life. And uh, I've never seen uh, oil get into an engine like that unless they've got broken rings or worn rings or anything like that but I can't believe it would break a piston ring how could it break a piston ring you know it was fine two days ago and then today I started out um, and it's just was right for a little while and just started smoking out the, the left bank and that was it so with that I'll let you know I'll get on with it um, you know, I hope Sterling Kit are going to get back to me and fix this thing because, you know, I had high hopes for this and I've done so much work of fitting it in the boat thinking that it was going to run fine and it's not. Um, we've got to fix the issue with the water pipe keeps pinging off. I mean, when you rev it, you can see that pipe actually expands, you know. It's never going to stay on there. I don't know what sort of clip you're going to put on there. Um, I, don't, I don't really get it because you've got two pipes, two inlets, to do each side and it's like just getting so much pressure there it just wants to blow the pipe off so I've got no idea what's you know and like I say the Chinese instructions I wish they would just tell you where these pipes go you have to look around ask people or watch Johnny Q videos or anyone else who's got one and actually try and find out you know they've got two pipes here and I believe one does the left side and one does the right side now, whether I've, that's right or not, I don't know. But the cooling system seems to be fighting each other. Um, it, it just wants to blow that pipe off all the time. Uh, and it just sprays water out everywhere, gets in a distributor, and, and then it won't run properly. And that very, very frustrating day I've had today. So um, I thought I'd you know, put it on YouTube to find out if anyone else has had this sort of problem. So anyway... That's enough of that. I've had, really had enough of that today. Um, I finished the um, 50cc broke away helicopter. Uh, I've done all the parts on that. And Dave's come and took it. Um, and he's, we're having some problems with the blaze. Because I've got a lot of washout on the blaze. And the ones are very old, what came with it. Um, I think Dave said he's going to resin them. But I'm not sure how far he's got with that. I haven't seen him for a while. So I'll have a word with him and you can be sure that first flight, we're going to put it on YouTube and hopefully it's going to fly. You know, I mean, it's a big, heavy old thing. Uh, but I did love building it and putting it together and all that. So I'm going to sign out now, guys. Sorry it's a bit of a rant, but I've had enough. So I'll see you in the next one.